So here with us is Terrell Germain Star, foreign affairs journalist, host of Black Diplomats podcast. He's in Ukraine right now. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you are our eyes, our ears on the ground. Uh, can you give us the latest? Yes, ma'am. Well, first of all, uh, thank you, sis, for having me on the show with you and Mike. You two are my favorite um, TV people, so um, I wish that I could be talking to you under better circumstances. Appreciate but what's happening, right now, but what's happening right now, basically, is that this country is, is under air, multiple airstrikes from across the country. Um, there are people who are fleeing the city. I live on a street where, that goes directly to the airport outside of the city, and people are literally making an exodus. Um, people are... Uh, withdrawing money out of ATMs. You, you walk around trying to get money. Uh, you, you can't do that. But the main things here, there's roughly about 40 people who have been killed uh, so far. And right now, uh, my, some of my, a couple of my colleagues have very good information from intel sources that uh, Russian troops are, are, uh, have taken over one airport near Kiev and are planning to surround this, this, this capital, which is what we expected right now. So this, this is a full-fledged um, this is a full-fledged mm -hmm. invasion right now, and there's sirens going off. Increased police presence. Tanks have rolled in. This this is a this is a real war. Yeah, a real war, and yet Vladimir Putin seems undeterred. As we heard President Zelensky for Ukraine say, "Don't panic. We're working here. Sanctions have not um, put enough, it seems, political pressure on Russia." So. You said people are fleeing there. Is it full-fledged panic? Uh, you know what? That's a, that's a good question. So, yes, people, there is panic, but it's also mixed with a degree of calm. So as many people who are leaving, there are a number of people, my, my friends, my colleagues included, who are here in Ukraine. And so in some parts of Kiev, remember, Kiev is roughly the size, of, around the size of Chicago, or perhaps a little bit bigger. And so there are certain parts um, that, that are more affected than others. But things in my neighborhood downtown are relatively calm. But if you go into other areas that were hit um, by, 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 by airstrikes, then that's a very different conversation. But in the capital, things are very calm. Things are relatively calm right now amongst people amid the panic to leave. The United States, the rest of the world, um, being second-guessed, if you will, Terrell, they, they are saying that not enough critics has been done here. If not sanctions, what can be done to stop Russia in its tracks? Again, that's a very good question. One of the problems is that Russian President Vladimir Putin is not accountable to anybody. Uh, and, and so protests don't matter. One thing that people don't know is that there are laws against protesting in Russia. In fact, I just saw recently that a person who tried to speak out against the war, a, a major uh, anti, a, a major activist in Russia, was detained by police. And so he has completely killed dissent in his own country, and it doesn't. And, and so he treats his own people like trash. He treats Ukrainians like white trash. This is a very racist um, 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 war that's happening against Ukraine. You don't hear people um, classify it that way, but that's very much what is happening right here. The way that he talks about Ukrainians is very much how white racists refer to black people. So this is bigger than geopolitics. Mm -hmm. this, this, this is this is, and, and also he talked about Crimea Tartars. In, in, in the in, in, in the next um, region of Crimea as as Islamic uh, extremists. And so he's also Islamophobic. And so he's just, this is what I call Putin's critical Ukraine theory. He is manufacturing lies about safety and security and, and, and to, in order to just, quote unquote, justify an attack against Ukraine in regards to what could be done. It's tough to deal with somebody who's a despot. It's very difficult to deal with somebody who doesn't care about humanity? I mean, I, there are people who I'm dealing with, who, who are my colleagues right now, who are just just in tears, and people who are worried about their families in conflict regions. But the sanctions regimes could be a lot tougher. More specifically, cutting Russia off from all major organizations, the World Trade Organization, any major organization, Russia should be disinvited from. That's what that's that's what uh, sanctions activists here have been calling for. Whether, but the key thing is that in order to cut off Russia. The, the world is going to take an economic hit from this because Russia can respond. And so that just shows you how global and, and far-reaching this, this issue is. It affects us. We don't think it does, but it very much impacts us. Yeah. Yeah, and we saw oil prices soaring uh, this morning. We don't know what the relief will be there. I guess the last question I have for you is this. I, 
I was texting with a Ukrainian friend um, late last night as we watched uh, Russia go ahead and do what they telegraphed that they were indeed going to do, and the fears for her family, and the united front that most Ukrainians are showing, um, supporting country um, against Russia. Are they, though, in support of this president, President Zelensky? Is he up for the challenge? Well, well, yes, he is. And so he, he's been a wartime president for some time right now. And I know people refer to him as a comedian, which I consider a ghettoization of, of him and Ukrainians mm -hmm. writ large. Another topic for another story. But I've seen um, um, President Zelensky speak. He very much sounds like a wartime president, one who has matured into this moment. How could he not? If you look at his face, you know, Zelensky is 44 years old. He's a young guy He and, 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 and pretty fit. Yeah. Uh, this war has aged him significantly, and I think that he's doing a valiant job. And people, uh, uh, all the colleagues that I know, uh, he's getting very, very positive reviews for how he's handling this. Yeah. He's showing, showing uh, maturity and, and veteranship at the moment. Well, Terrell Starr, I, I just want to say that we, you're, it's a treasure having you as our eyes and our ears over there, and the context that you've given us, just extraordinary. Stay safe. We appreciate you very much and hope to check in with you in the days ahead.